Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Lightning Talks. Uh, I think that you all already know from yesterday how this one works. We have 15 minutes of talk, five minutes of uh, change to the next speaker. And uh, this morning, we are going to start with uh, Martin Baer and let's fix the internet. Hello? Ah, good morning. Um, I'm going to jump right into it so we don't lose too much time. Um, quickly, um, you all know how the internet was developed. Um, and uh, basically, it was built on, on trust. Um, it was assumed that um, every computer on the network is safe and is trusted, and we know who the administrators are, and there are no bad people on the internet. Um, and so the protocols that were developed were basically developed um, with that trust in mind, and it was assumed that uh, if you send an email, you can trust that email. If you send any kind of message or can any packet, they're all safe and uh, don't do bad things. And um, as a result, now we have to deal with spam, uh, denial of service attacks. We have problems with cookies. They're being abused. They're so bad that the European Union made laws to protect the general public um, or warn the general public about how bad cookies are um, to um, try to protect them. Um, we should have done much better than that. Um, IoT uh, made things even worse. Um, most IoT devices are hopelessly insecure, um, can be easily hacked, and can be abused for uh, whatever. And really, um, if we want to have uh, secure IoT devices, we need to block them from being able to access the internet. That's really the only way to, to make them uh, secure. Um, is anyone here not familiar with the OC model um, of, of uh, uh, networking? Um, just briefly, the bottom two layers are hardware. Um, network layer and transport layer are mostly in the kernel. And then the other layers, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer, application layer, are all somewhere in the application. So basically, any application that you're running on your computer um, that wants to do things on the network is um, working on these three to four layers at the top. And um, so they, any application can do their own network connections. And uh, most importantly, um, every application is responsible for their own end user identification. Um, emails, again, is a good example. Um, mail servers don't identify um, who is sending or receiving emails. Only your mail client is trying to identify that. And email addresses are not um, trustable because they can be faked. And um, if you sign emails, if you have signed emails, then your mail client can verify that this email is actually genuine. Um, but the mail server and any intermediary cannot do anything. And so basically, they have to allow every message through because they don't know whether it's genuine or fake. And only the recipient can really 100% sure uh, decide whether this email is genuine or not. I mean, there are uh, guesses uh, um, about how to detect spam. But these are guesses, and sometimes those guesses are wrong. Um, the only person that is really sure is the recipient. Um, so how do we get out of this mess? Um, the idea is we put user identification first. Uh, we create an operating system that allows apps to, to be built on a user first uh, uh, paradigm as far as uh, communication is concerned, so that the applications um, don't open their own internet connections, but um, ha let the OS uh, deal with that. So this is uh, where Elastos comes in. So Elastos is an operating system that attempts to address this problem. Um, it's um, a complete set of C, C++ APIs and frameworks. Um, they even rewrote the complete Android framework and runtime in C++ so that you can run uh, build applications in C++, in Java, or in any scripting language. Um, 
and then take advantage of the features that the operating system provides. It's a distributed OS runtime uh, with end-to-end -end security across a peer-to-peer -peer network. And um, it's built for containers and virtual machines, and it's using blockchain for authentication. Um, so let me explain how that uh, um, is uh, supposed to work. So basically, the idea is um, that the operating system is taking over the transport session and presentation layers. And it's taking over user identification. So instead of a program like a mail client opening up an SMTP connection uh, um, to another mail server, the client will ask the operating system and say, I want to send a message to a person which is identified by some uh, um, key, and then the operating system will go out and try to find this person um, using the peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, and then once it found it, it will, on the recipient side, will ask for permission that there is this identity here who wants to send a message um, to that other identity, and then the recipient needs to first acknowledge that they want to have a connection with this sender, and only after this um, authorization happened, the mail client is actually allowed to send their message. They will be given a socket of some kind and then say, okay, here, now we've established a connection and here we can send you a message through. Um, so basically, um, user identification um, is handled at the operating system level and then all applications can take advantage of it and um, the applications themselves can no longer connect to the network on their own. Basically, they have to ask the operating system for permission, and that way um, we essentially um, solve the, the problems that we've been seeing because we're preventing apps from making their own network connections, and um, so we prevent spam, DOS, attacks, worms, viruses, and uh, um, what have you. Um, a little bit about the, the history um, of this uh, project. This project started in the year 2000 um, in uh, China um, to build a smartphone operating system, and then it was eventually um, outpaced and overrun by um, Android and iOS, so they didn't uh, get finished uh, in time, or didn't get, weren't able to attract uh, uh, um, any, any um, clients or customers for, to use it. And they restarted in 2012 with um, a focus on IoT. At that time, they received uh, $30 million of funding by Foxconn, and um, Foxconn wanted to build an operating system for themselves, for mobile phones, for IoT devices. And um, they uh, managed to get something done. We got uh, um, Elastus running on, on a phone, um, on uh, some of these devices, um, basically in, in beta state. Um, it's uh, technically working, but of course, st uh, still more testing uh, needs to be done to, to make it um, workable for, for the end user. Um, then last year, um, we started to um, add the blockchain to the platform. So the idea here is that um, a blockchain is a potential solution for the um, identif identification of, of users in the system. Um, so we put IDs um, for people and also for applications um, and for data onto the blockchain so that we can verify that um, when you're running an application that it's the same application that uh, um, you've been running before or that somebody else is running. Um, uh, that when you are getting a message from an ID, then you can verify that it is the same ID um, every time. Um, technically, it doesn't have to be blockchain to solve this problem, but um, this is the chosen solution at this point. And so um, it enabled um, um, Bitcoin investors um, to fund the project and uh, received uh, a few million uh, um, dollars uh, out of that. And um, so that's what we're working on now. Um, the runtime is essentially finished. 
um, and um, now we're, um, we've implemented the blockchain layer. Um, in this coming two months, we're working on the peer-to-peer -peer networking layer, and um, we will work on the, on the runtime to um, sometime in, in summer, I hope that we will be ready for developers to start um, developing applications um, on the platform. And um, of course, we're also always ready um, for contributors to work on the operating system itself. Um, yes, um, okay, I'm, I'm pretty much done. Um, I have a few references that you can look up when you, when you download the PDF later. Um, are there any questions? Yes? How to be anonymous in the system? That's a very interesting question. So um, this question has, has been come up in previous talks. Uh, um, how does an identity get onto the, onto the blockchain? Um, that basically hasn't been worked out yet, so we've, we're still figuring out how to actually um, get this thing, uh, system started. Um, my personal idea is that uh, there's pos probably um, different ways how you get an ID, and in the end effect, um, even an ID on the blockchain is just some cryptographic key. Um, and so as long as no person itself is attached to that key, you are anonymous. You see similar things with, uh, um, I think, in uh, Freenet and other systems where your computer will just generate a key, but nobody knows who the person is that is actually connected to that key. So you are essentially anonymous. So the, the question of how to be anonymous is really how you get that identity. And if nobody verifies your passport uh, with that identity, then you're essentially uh, anonymous. And if you don't put any personally identifying information um, into that identity, then you're staying anonymous. But um, once you have established connection, con um, communication with somebody, you can always um, verify that the next message is coming from that same anonymous identity. Yes? Um, okay, I said I, I can block out uh, a spam and, and, and attacks, um, and you're asking about other things to block out. What Um, well, the side effect is that you can essentially um, no longer broadcast uh, uh, stuff easily. Um, how, that there's supposed to be a, a way to build uh, websites or something like por personal pages into the system. Um, I don't know how that's going to work. I think what's going to what's going to happen is that the recipients, the readers of that site. Uh, um, will have to uh, make a request to read the site and other, uh, um, then allow the, the site um, to um, send messages to your computer. Um, but this isn't, hasn't been worked out yet, so um, I don't know if there are any other side effects that uh, um, we haven't considered yet. Yes? Okay, um, um, yes, the system is closed, and the way you uh, um, integrate is by installing it onto a computer where you still have other stuff running. So um, it can run as a standalone operating system, but we are also building it as, a, as an application that you can install into your mobile phone, and then you run it. So you have like a sandbox, you have a container um, where this thing is running, and then you have other containers, or you have the, other, the rest of the operating system where you still have your old stuff, and my hope is or the hope is that eventually you are going to use the other stuff less and less and less, and then everybody has this thing installed, and then it's, it's quasi-native, and then eventually um, it is uh, um, really native. Okay, we're, uh, time is ending. 
Um, I just want to point out if anybody is interested in blockchain projects, um, we have a blockchain uh, above at uh, 2 o'clock. And um, I'm hosting, or we are hosting a blockchain dev room at the Hong Kong Open Source Conference, and we're interested in getting projects uh, to present there. And, um, and lastly, this is about me. Um, you can hire me for development community consulting, CTO services, and web development. Thank you.